I'm going to show you how to replace a UFH actuator controller. UFH stands for under floor heating, but this process works for baseboard heating as well if you have this type of system. So if you find this content helpful, please hit the subscribe button. So most heating systems that use hot water have zone valves, and those valves have controllers. I, in our previous video, I've showed you how to replace the zone valve, that little brass piece right there that I'm actually moving up and down. That's the actual valve. And then the actuator or controller is this white thing on top. And they stopped making this model and replaced it with an updated model. This is an up and or system, uh, manifold system. So here we go. We're going to get going on this. And the first thing we do is shut the power off to the boiler. And I also do it at the breaker, just to be certain. And we can go back to our manifold and find the, the wire box, open it up and find a rat's nest of a wiring situation going on. These are all the actuator controllers. They're all wired, uh, you know, kind of together. Um, so the first thing we do is identify the one that we're replacing. So I just pull on the cord gently until I can identify uh, which wires go. So these, this is a four wire actuator, meaning each of these controllers has four wires that we need to connect. And I'm gonna show you how these connect to the valve. You see that thing I'm pushing in? That's what clicks it onto the valve and holds it down on there. So these can fail in many ways. That clip can break in which it doesn't stay on the valve anymore. Or in this case, it just stopped working electronically. It has failed inside, so it, it's time to replace. The system is uh, about 15 years old, so uh, as to be expected. And I'm just going through and identifying where the wires are um, that we need to replace and taking mental notes, taking pictures to remember. And how these actuators work is when you when it's clipped on, it's held down, which keeps the valve closed. And when you turn the heat on, it opens it up. And this is the model number, A3023522. The old model number was A301. So this is the updated actuator. It works just the same, just a little bit different design. Um, and we're gonna, there are the, the gray adapter pieces to attach it to the actual valve. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna route these wires. There's not a lot of room in this controller box, but I did find enough to wire it through just to kind of help me visually. I'm gonna line up the wires you'll see before I start undoing things. So I'm just getting the new blue controller uh, situated um, in a position to make the connections easier. So I'm just pulling it through this box, you can see? Got it all, you know, pulled through, ready to be hooked up. There's the four wires, two, two yellow, two red, just like the old one. So we just need to replace them, swap out yellow for yellow and red for red. So I'm identifying which one we're replacing. And you can see this, that yellow wire coming off it. That's the first one I'm going to replace. So there are the four wires that we need to hook up. And going from the old one, I'm just kind of seeing where they go. And this first yellow one is the first one I'm going to take care of. So I'm going to undo that cap one-handed while I film, take that off. And I'm going to immediately connect the new yellow wire with that, you know, where that was in replace. Um, do one by one. I do the easiest one first so I don't get confused and mixed up. So there, I swapped the one. The one old yellow is off. Now I got to repeat the process for the other yellow and the two reds. So I'm gonna, here's the other yellow. You can see this one's gonna be more difficult. There's about five wires going into this one. So just carefully remove the, the wire net and I pull off the old yellow wire from the actuator that's not working. And then we'll hook up the remaining yellow wire from the new actuator. So that way yellow will be taken care of and then we can go on to red. So I'm very carefully not to mix up anything, grabbing that new yellow wire, putting it in a splice. This is difficult. Um, it's a tight wing nut. This is probably too many, but you know, it worked. So I got that, start to get that one back on the, uh, the yellow nut, rather the, the wire nut for the yellow wires. So you can see here, getting that on, we got it nice and, uh, all the wires are attached. It's firmly on. They're not going anywhere. They fit in there just enough, nice and snug. So with the yellows done, we can now focus on the reds. And I just do the same process again with the reds, being careful not to mix up any wires and just replacing the, you know, the old wires for the new actuator wires. And with that all completed, we can remove the old broken actuator, keep that to the side. Uh, and if you're wondering how I found that, um, 
there is numbers on the side of the old actuator, um, but here are the four connections I made. They're all complete. So remove the old um, adapter piece to put on the new one because it has changed with this new actuator model. I just need a little help. So to identify which actuator or valve you had, you, you simply need to read the markings on it. And if you contact a plumbing company or look online, you should be able to figure out um, which one is which um, at, for your system. Again, this is an upper manifold system. So you just need to do a little bit of research and you can find the parts, but most of the parts have markings on them like these actuators did. So I'm just tightening on the new adapter just a little bit, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I'm not, that, that'll easily break that plastic. So I just tightened it just a little bit. Now I can take the new actuator, which is already hooked up. And I, you push that little push tab on the front and it'll clip right on. So we're clipped on right now. And it comes shipped in a halfway position. You can see that white pop, that's halfway up. That's not up. The only the way to get it out of the locked position is to turn the heat on. Uh, for six minutes, but here's everything and before we put everything away. We are going to test it Again here are the new zones and I did turn it on well But we needed to turn the temperature up So that it is actually calling for heat in that zone And we can see on the manifold after a few minutes. It did pop up the heat's flowing Everything is fixed. So we just need to button up that uh, electrical box, put everything back, and we should be back to business. So if you found this content helpful, I do have another video as how to replace the, the actual valve, the brass piece inside. But I just want to remind everyone that if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you found this content helpful, please subscribe to the channel.